Welcome to the Northern Powerhouse interview series, where we're unashamedly spreading good news by interviewing Northern businesses and their successes during the pandemic. Subscribe to be notified of new interviews or click the link in the description to take part if you'd like to be interviewed yourself in a future episode. The Northern Powerhouse is our business success uh, story series of interviews. Today we have with us Christian Mercer, the founder of Positive Plus One. So Christian, welcome. Thanks for spending some time with us. And perhaps if you'd just like to explain to everybody who you are and what, what Positive Plus One does and how it serves the community. Okay, um, so thank you for having me. Um, so yeah, Positive Plus One um, <clears throat> was born out of wanting to help a friend of mine. Um, he was diagnosed with HIV nearly five, six years ago now. And, you know, as you do with any friend that's in need, you, you know, you reach out to see if in, in a way that you can help. Um, he was on medication. He was receiving support from a local charity. But he was a 26-year-old, you know, young guy. And he was like, how do I meet anybody? Um, so I went out to go find something of this kind, you know, a platform that could maybe help, a website, wherever it may be. Uh, and he couldn't find anything online. And then I went to a lot of the charities that, you know, uh, service the HIV community, support the HIV community, uh, and said, look, do you have anything that caters for this? Um, this uh, you know, people do meet in our support group sessions, but other than that, there's nothing. Um, and yeah, and it just thought, well, if I can help one, then I can probably help on many. Um, and that's where it was born. So since then, we started out originally as a, as a dating platform. Um, we launched the white label and it went, global in you know in the first couple of months uh, so then we so then we went sort of back to the drawing board and, and used a lot of focus group and a lot of feedback and expanded it into more of a social uh, community network more of a social app with the dating aspect to it recently raised 260,000 in the uh, in the first lockdown of, uh, of 2020 um, and yeah so we're in a really good position and ultimately the app is there to, to serve the HIV community you know, to connect people, like many people who share a similar story. Fantastic, fantastic, and and you know, pretty much this life cycle you've described has has happened all my, you know pretty much in the last twelve months. So through you've experienced all this growth and change through through the lockdown period. So what you know, thinking about obviously this time last year, you'd raised your funding and you were, you were cracking on. What what happened? How did the COVID outbreak affect you? Um, I mean, initially, so I, I started my funding round, gosh, I think I, I actually started my first funding round in late, in Q4 of 2019. Um, so, you know, you know we, I was expecting for it to be sort of, you know, a sort of a three month period. And um, God, we didn't actually close at least the first installment of the round until about August 2020. So you can see from just a timely matter there, it was doubled, if not more. Um, so <clears throat> that was <laughs> that was really difficult. We were getting investors who were, you know, fully in and then saying that their business had been impacted and having to drop out, uh, both in the UK and in the US. Um, then we had other issues to deal with, you know, developers um, and our development teams, you know, having to work remotely completely. So they had to implement new CRM systems um, and adjust the, you know, and adjust to that sort of lifestyle. I know a lot of you know, developers do work remotely, but to have every bit of your infrastructure at home is, you know, it does have an impact. So from a lead time and a build time, um, we were impacted there as well. So I think um, you have to sort of, you, you have to greet it with, uh, with empathy stuff like that rather than becoming frustrated and then but you know still remind people of what the end goal is and, and you know stay true to your stay true to your course kind of thing amazing absolutely amazing it's a quite quite a story um what would you say are some of the biggest issues you've had to overcome oh gosh i think look we, we <clears throat> you you have deadlines um that you set yourself a big deadline for us was World AIDS Day, which is the 1st of December. It's arguably the biggest HIV event on, you know, on, in, on our calendar. So we wanted to have uh, a brand new platform built and ready for then. 
Um, obviously, we wanted to have the funds in place to be able to build it as well. So time was of the essence. So I think more than anything, um, I think that not having as much time was the, the probably the biggest thing that we had to overcome. And yeah. we, me, myself and my team, we were, God, we were sort of starting at 8 a.m. and finishing at 3 a.m. some days. You know, it was crazy. It, it really is incredible. And, uh, what, <laughs> what, what, what are some of the adaptations you've had to make, but both, I guess, you know, working on, on the app, but also not being um, together, you know, lockdown requires remote working. I think the main, the main thing for me, uh, and, and I truly believe good communication is the key to any good relationship. Um, so I think upkeeping with that, you know, with, with that level of communication daily, uh, rather than sort of, you know, and it's almost like a, a micromanagement role, um, but making sure that everyone's working off the ration of a roadmap by now. Um, you know, and it's and it slightly changes. Is that uh, is that just frozen a little bit there? It, it did a little, but it's okay. I think I think we got the key message. The, the word it was interesting, and, and I've heard this from quite a few people I've interviewed. It's it's the sort of over communication. It's you 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 know it, it's maxing maxing on communication when you're disparate, and I think when so when you're apart, and um, yeah, that uh, that makes a lot of sense. Mm. So. Um, <clears throat> And then, yeah, I think I think keeping keeping people motivated is is a really key a key thing as well. You have to understand and and empathise again with what what people have got going on at home, which would be may, maybe a distraction that they wouldn't normally have to deal with. Um, Steve, my co-founder, he's got two young daughters, and you know, there's times when we'll be on a Zoom, and he's he's obviously trying to do homeschool, and so. There's a little bit of give and take on, on both sides. Uh, and I think, again, that comes down to communication and understanding where each individual is at. Yeah, it, 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 the, the whole, whole homeschooling piece is quite a challenge, I think, for many people. And, um, I, I, you know, I'm picking up um, from things like, you know, that, that I think this third lockdown has, has made it even harder, I think, for people. Whereas before it felt like it was quite temporary. And now, you know, we're looking into, it's sort of like to be half term, so it's Easter and, and beyond. Um, so it's a bit of a challenge. What, to, but on the on the plus side, what you know, some of the wins you I think you mentioned earlier. But what are the key wins that you would see that you and the team have achieved? I think, <clears throat> I think you know when there's almost like a people band together when there's almost a, a, a common a common enemy or there's a there's a, a common goal. Um, and I think the culture that we've developed amazingly, we managed to develop even though we've been so far apart. Um, has, has been brilliant and so I think one of the main key win key wins in initially is just to have you know maintain and developing that culture um, you know everyone's working towards the same goal we are <clears throat> we managed to you know launch a platform uh, for World Edge Day which was you know amazing uh, yeah. it was extremely difficult but it was amazing um, <clears throat> you know we've had to come together as a team it wasn't just myself and Steve making the decisions. We came together as a team. We had to strip back what we originally thought was our MVP. We stripped it back to what it really could be to meet that deadline. Um, yeah. Again, you know, banding, banding together. Um, obviously, yeah. Look, you know, raising raising the funds through a lock, you know, through a lockdown, a national, you know, an international pandemic um, was, was a massive win. Um, but you know, in my my in my developing that, that growth mindset, I just there, there was no way that it wasn't going to happen. Yeah, um, yeah, and I think, yeah, I, I think that you know the, the culture and the fact that we managed to hit hit still hit his deadlines. You know, I'm yeah. super, super happy. And, and you mentioned relationships and team building, and, and and I know that some of your current team you've never physically met. So, bit, building relationships with people remotely is uh, must be one of your areas of expertise. <laughs> honestly i think um transparency yeah. and honesty is 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 so key um you know and, and it helps with things like <clears throat> if you if you just sort of vocalize it and, and you get it out there um if something's frustrating you rather than it building up to become resentment on either party's side um you know just say look you know we're not happy with this or 
and I, I always ask the question in our in the beginning of our meetings before I say anything. You know, tell me what's what where you guys are at, um, and, and you know, tell me what's you know what's frustrating you at the minute. And and I can I can understand. Um, all, that also means that when I when I go to say my bit, I could maybe slightly change it so I don't piss anybody off as well. So <laughs> still, get, still get across what I need to say, but maybe just say it slightly softer. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it's good to know how people are feeling, how, how they are at a particular point of time. Because, uh, and, and often, you know, it's not related to what we're going to discuss. It can be to do with stuff externally, but knowing that helps us adjust adjust the, the communication that we might have. So that, make, that, makes, that makes perfect sense. So, I mean, you know, a lot of, you've, of, of what you've done has been in, within the lockdown period, but it, if you look back pre and, and then when we get into it, is there any key adjustments that you had to make um, to, 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 to get the outcomes that you have? Well, outside of the lockdown? Um, you know, I, I, I'll be honest with the, you know, with, with your audience. I think uh, <clears throat> I was a, I'm a relatively I'm a young CEO of a company that, you know, that's going to have short exponential growth. So um, I had to do a lot of self learning as well. Um, and yeah. I really knuckled down on, on myself, looked at areas where I can self reflect and I can, I can certainly improve myself. Um, ultimately that's going to benefit everybody and, and, and you know, the businesses that I'm involved in. Um, so that's something I really focused on both inside and outside of, um, of the lockdowns. Um, <clears throat> What else? I got. I, I mean, there the, the seems to be there seems to be so much that's happened in such a short space of time. Um, but yeah, look, you know, I think maintaining maintaining my health as well. You know, yes. I, I've been guilty of um, I've been guilty of just focusing on work, um, and whilst that's great for a short period of time, almost like you know development sprints, um, it can't be maintained. And if you want to if you want longevity in your performance, I think, um, you know, especially in these times as well, getting outdoors, you know, in some form of exercise, you know, be it meditation, whatever else as well, um, means, you know, upkeep of your own health will ultimately benefit everything and everybody. Brilliant. I, I, yeah, I mean, it's, it's fascinating. As you say, you've achieved so much and you are, you're, you're a relatively young guy. Um, to have done so and, and there aren't many I'm sure there are quite a few now but many people that have raised um, over a quarter of a million pounds uh, in the initial funding round um, and it's just amazing it's just yeah it really is wonderful it's uh, well, we, we, we were pretty much pre-revenue uh, so I, you know I did as much due diligence as possible yeah um, but you know similar companies you know health tech kind of companies like mine um you know there's a there's a great platform called crunchbase that i use and you can sort of check out the market and scope it out and, and see what other sort of similar companies have raised and how much equity they they've given away and um but a lot of those had sort of revenue already generated so we to, to raise that amount of money um you know and, and give away a very fair um amount of equity was was you know yeah good going <laughs> i think we we need to do a obviously this this one's primarily around growing through covid i think we could do a separate session just on the the the, the life cycle of what you've achieved so far i think that would be great to go into into more detail but I, I guess back to the lockdown a little bit we're now in third one um it it, it has a, i think it's, a, it's interesting enough i think it's affected people in a different way probably as much as fundamental as the first one, but in a different way. Um, but what, what, how has it affected you and the team? Um, <clears throat> so, like I said, you know, the, the, the difference, I feel like the difference this time between the first lockdown and this, this, you know, this third lockdown is that uh, people are, just give me one second, sorry. Sorry, I was just had the background noise. Somebody playing music. Oh. <laughs> I'll start again. You ready? <laughs> yeah. Um, so look, I think the difference between this lockdown, uh, you know, the third lockdown now, and, and you know, the initial lockdown, and, and how it's affected my team, and, and and you know, and I think how it's affected you know the, the, the general public. 
I think when the first lockdown was announced, um, there was uncertainty, but you know, the, the nation sort of banded together as a common enemy. Um, you know, and, and it was it was like people were prepared for a fight, whatever that may be. Um, you know, even with that level of uncertainty. Um, this, you know, we, we sort of got let a little bit free uh, with sort of the, the new normal of rules and then got back into a lockdown, you know, mid, mid-November. But you still had that, that um, the hope of sort of Christmas and something to look forward to. I think now, the third, um, uh, the third lockdown, they, um, <clears throat> I feel like people have grown a little bit tired. Yeah. And I feel like people are really starting to, to feel it now. And I think, you know, the best thing that I can do, and, you know, anybody else listening to this is, is just try and keep that motivation high. Yeah. Um, remind people of what their pur- purpose is, what their, what the end goal is. Uh, you know, the, it's almost as though there's still something to look forward to. Um, you know, yes, we're going to have to live with this new normal uh, for however long that may be. Um, but, you know, it's about sort of maintaining morale and, and, and keeping that, you know, that company culture that I mentioned before, um, you know, keeping the spirits high. You know, again, from me, it's on em- empathising and understanding with different people's situations, you know, the homeschool yep. thing. I, you know, I, I can imagine for a lot of people that is so taxing, you know, to children take so much of your time. Um, yeah. Fortunately, I don't have any kids yet, so I don't have to deal with that. But, um, you know, that's, uh, yeah, I think, I think that's it, uh, uh, where, where people are struggling. I, mean, I just thought that yeah. everyone sort of, maintains high spirits and you know there is there is light in the tunnel it, it's a really good uh, description actually because it, 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 I, I think the first one um came with a, quite a lot of fear because people didn't know because we most people naturally fear the unknown so it, it came with a level of, of fear with it but there there was the energy of as you say fighting it coming together um that there isn't the fear this time because we know we know what it's like it's just the weariness of having to keep doing it I guess so it's, it's a it's a great point and I know personally just you know just being self-aware that you know that it, it, I, I do find it, it, it getting the motivation up is 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 a, an ongoing challenge but it's, it's great so let's let's get a little bit more positive and let's talk about the future so right so well welcome back Christian I know we've moved for, for, for internet reasons which is great so <laughs> as you said we, we've talked about the challenges we faced but looking forward now, uh, let's look, look, look and, get, and get more positive. What are you most looking forward to when we get back to some form of new normal? Look, I think m- myself and I speak for a lot of people when I say this, outdoor events, yeah. um, you know, we, we've got, <clears throat> obviously, you know, the, which is something that's probably worth mentioning. Um, I, I would imagine that most people, the common misconception is that um, the HIV community is solely or majority the LGBTQ community. That's actually not the case. Um, in the UK, around 56% are, um, people living with HIV are heterosexual. Right. Um, but we are also really looking forward to doing the Pride events. Um, so yeah. we want to be doing a... We're gonna, we're, the intention is for us to be doing a, a speed dating, um, a speed yeah. dating event. At the, at the actual Pride events. Um, and we are, we're going to normalize and, and aim to destigmatize, you know, dating someone with HIV. Yep. Um, whilst, whilst, the app, whilst the app caters for, um, you know, the HIV community, it's not solely for the HIV community, which I think is quite interesting. Um, yep. hmm, there are people who've grown up with parents with HIV or they've previously dated someone within with HIV. So they understand that yes. you know, if somebody's taking their medication and they suppress their viral load. Um, you know, it's called um, uh, undetectable means untransmittable. U equals U is the big campaign around this. Right. And yeah. ultimately what that means for anybody listening is if you suppress your viral load, the amount of virus in your system, yep. you, can, you can effectively have unprotected sex and not pass on the virus, right. which is a massive advancement in, you know, yeah, yeah. the community and people are living, um, you know, people are living long, full, healthy lives by yeah. suppressing the virus in the system, the viral load. So, um, you know, I, I think we're, we're so looking forward to getting back out and doing, um, you know, doing outdoor events, you know, the, the pride things are amazing. Um, 
you know, e even little things, we're, we're partnering with a company and as part of our subscription, you're going to be able to um, get 50% off of um, movies and 50% off of eat, dining out and stuff like that. Um, you know, so it really, not only does the platform re-empower people and connect people to one another, people who understand, um, it also, you know, empowers them to get back out into the, into the community and, and, and engage, um, you know, with, with things going on around them. Unfortunately, a lot of people who are living with HIV, especially when newly diagnosed, tend to become a little bit of a recluse. So with the inclusion of events that you showcase on the app, you're not only able to connect with a person, but you can also also discover an event, and then you know, like the like the saying says, you can find a plus one to go with positive plus one. Brilliant, love it. I love it. I, yeah, as you say, hopefully, maybe this summer we can see some events get going on, which would be would, yeah. Would be I, I'm hoping so. Yeah, I'm hoping so. me too, uh, definitely. So, I mean, you've got obviously you, you you've you've made some amazing uh, strides forward in in what you're doing and. There's lots of growth to come. And what, what, what are some of the challenges that you may, you know, that, that you're preparing for, you may foresee as, as, you, as you grow um, grow the app and grow the business? Um, okay, so, uh, God, some of the main events. I mean, look, from a, from a, a technical point of view, um, we've got some, oh, gosh, we've got some really big, you know, really big plans as part of our roadmap. Um, then, um, Chris, can I just pause one second? I'm so sorry. Is that right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I, I'm interested. We, we've obviously, you've achieved so much already. You've, 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 you've you know, you raised the funding. The, the app is out, out, you know, is out there. We've got, we've got users, et cetera. Uh, we've got a lot of growth to come. What, if any, do you see as the main challenges that you face as you grow the, the app and the business? So as part of our roadmap and, you know, as part of our innovation that's, that we've got planned, um, we've got some, you know, quite hefty things to be building in, um, you know, and with anything like that, you know, technical builds, there's always going to be difficulties and challenges that we just, that we just can't foresee. Um, yeah. And I think, <clears throat> gosh, you know, I think adjusting to what, um, you know, to what the new normal might be, uh, you know, again, whatever that might look like, who knows? Yeah. Um, but yeah, we are, um, you know, we're, we're really focused on being able to just provide as much, as much value to the community and to the charities that we support as well. So, um, you know, th th again, that's going to come with its own difficulties. We are in, in, you know, in the very imminent future about to go global with the, um, with the platform. Um, right. So what we're working on right now behind the scenes is localization, which basically means translating, you know, the whole app to yeah. cater for different, you know, different communities, um, you know, different languages. So that in itself is a, is a big job. And, you know, you, you don't want to make any mistakes there because we don't want to be sending the wrong message <laughs> at all. So, um, yeah. And, and I think, look, and, and actually, you know, we're, we're going to go, we're probably going to go into, um, you know, at the end of sort of Q1, beginning of Q2, we're going to start looking to, to raise more funds. Um, yeah. You know, and this is just to help us scale. You know, we, we've now proved that, um, you know, what its cost per acquisition is and, and, and how the partnerships are forming and stuff like that. So in order for us to scale and scale quickly, um, we're, going to, um, we're going to raise some more funds. So, you know, that again comes with its own challenges and there's a lot of, a lot of work that goes into those. So it's, it's managing time is probably going to be, the number one and the number one thing yeah that makes perfect sense for for, for busy um yeah busy entrepreneurs so um so just i guess rich looking a little bit backwards but what have you learned about yourself over this last 12 months oh gosh a lot a lot i think one really sort of key positive um that i really take in is that you know, for, for a long time, especially as an entrepreneur, and, and so many people will, 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 you know, recognize and understand this, is that you have these ideas and you have these aims and objectives and dreams. And, and you know, and that's, that's all they are in the beginning, they're just the dream. And this, sometimes um, they sound so wild. And, you know, when I know myself, when, <clears throat> when I started this journey, 
you know, I define as a, as a heterosexual single man and, you know, my family and friends, when I launched this platform, were like, what, what, what are you doing? Like, you know, I'm a barber by trade, you know, which seems so polar opposite to what I'm doing now. Um, you know, so uh, over, overcoming those things and, and proving to myself that, you know, that things can be achieved, um, you know, going into a funding round, my first funding round, um, you know, and, and sort of gathering the feedback and, and don't get me wrong, not every pitch was amazing, but certainly by the end, um, certainly by the end, you know, it, it, it was great. I was being clapped. So, you know, there's, 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 oh, well, there's yeah, exactly. There's wins there. Um, I think, I think I really, I've really learned patience, um, you know, and I, I think sort of to empathize with, with myself and, and with my team as well, you know, especially given these times and, you know, gosh, I think, I think a really, a really good one actually, which is, um, it is, is so worth for everybody, regardless of what you're doing is you're not always going to be right. You know, you might have all the best intentions, you might have all you might you think of all the greatest ideas, but you know unless you test it and you validate it and you try, you you know you're not always right. And I think understanding that's where this the, the self empathy comes from. You know, understanding that you have to try things. You know, and and that. So, you know, I think more so from a self reflection point of view. I think you know any entrepreneurs listening, if you want to grow and you want to grow fast, learn to look inside. You know, learn learn to work from within and then it comes out brilliant what well, very wise words it funny enough um our founder brad triggers the guy that started action coach is a very very successful and wealthy guy he, he he told me a long time ago that he's as successful as he is because he's made more mistakes than anybody else he's, he knows rather, rather I, have a, I have a, a saying a kind of term that you know some people won't agree with but you know the the, the, the traditional saying this is uh don't try to run before you can walk. Well, I, I kind of, I disagree with that. Um, I think if you, if you run and you set off, you know, you're going to trip up, but as long as you pick yourself up and you keep running, then, you know, you, in my opinion, you're going to have got further than we do it. If would have done, if you'd have just been walking, um, you know, for me, a nine, a nine to five feels like walking, uh, a, you know, an eight to 3 AM sounds like sprinting. You know, and, and don't get me wrong, you're going to crack and burn a couple of times along that, but you learn how to recover and, you know, so yeah, run, run, learn to run before you can walk. <laughs> Love it. I, I, I'll, I'll take that one. I like that. Thank you. Mm. So it's it been absolutely fascinating. and th Thank you for spending the time. So just on the, the, the final question is, what does, it look, what does the future look like? Uh, I'm so excited. We have, <clears throat> we have February coming up, um, you know, in the next week which as we all know is Valentine's Day. Um, we actually have a, a new version of the app launching that's actually got submitted to the app store last night. Really? You know, some, some tweaks, some refinements, um, some improvements, you know, which we're really excited about. And we've got a, a campaign as first proper campaign running uh, market campaign called the month of love. Uh, we're going to be working directly with national AIDS trust in a partnership with those guys. And ultimately, they, for them, it's a fundraiser. Um, so we're going to be donating one to one, one pound to one pound fifty of each paid subscription back to that back to their charity. Um, in turn, they're going to be promoting us through their social channels and their internal network, um, which, coming from such a long-standing organisation, adds so much credibility and trust to our brand. And the fact that they trust it and they want to work with us is such a compliment. Yeah. Um, so that's you know. In the imminent future, that's really exciting. Um, our roadmap for the next 12 months in terms of app development is amazing. Um, you know, I, I really sort of <clears throat> use the time sort of coming out of the new year to um, to really sort of, you know, get some good thinking time in and, yep. uh, and you know, and, and sort of really implement that thinking time into innovation within the app. So, you know, from a, from a development point of view, super excited. And hopefully all those things combined, um, we'll have a really good year. Really good year. I'm sure you will. I've no doubt about that. So mm. look, it'd be great to maybe come back in six or 12 months and, and just catch up with your successes and, and progress. So I, on that note, re I really appreciate your time, Christian. And um, um, thank you. And, and very good luck for, for the next few months, but also the next few years. Yeah. Thank you so much. Cheers, Chris. Brilliant. Thanks for watching. What was your takeaway from today's interview? 
please post it in the comments below and subscribe for all our upcoming videos or click for the next video here.